which is far away. Yeah, go ahead. Tony on a pretty good roll with the falls. I mean, can you just kind of assess? I mean, how do you feel? How's everything going for you right now? Um, you know, I feel good, wrestling good. Um, yeah, I mean, just you know, I've always been pretty good on top. Been having success on top against guys getting falls. Nine pins and eleven wins so far this year. When you when you have a tournament like you had, um, you know, at Solar Salute last week. Do you, I, do you go in trying to work on specific things, or is it just get on and off the mat as quick as possible, or what's your approach that way? Um, I mean, it's just I'm going out there to wrestle, you know, how I wrestle. Um, you know, Tom had me cut the guys a few times, got some takedowns, you know, just working on my wrestling. But, I mean, it's a tournament. I'm going out there to wrestle and beat the other guy. I'm not like, you know, it doesn't matter the competition. I'm not going out there and saying – oh, this guy's maybe not as good or, you know, I should be able to pin this guy, so I'm going to go out there and work on this. No, I mean, it's wrestling and everybody's game, so. This is probably getting a little picky, but do you ever think about endurance, I mean, and, and yearn for a seven-minute match again? Oh, I mean, I'm not worried about that. I'm, you know, wrestling in the room every day, wrestling hard, wrestling long. Um, you know, just because I have a few matches that are short doesn't, you know, take away from my endurance or make me worry about my endurance or anything like that. Um, I think it was your freshman year. You talked about the pin record. Um, is that still on your mind, or how has that maybe changed over the last few years? Um, you know, I mean, I want to go out there and I want to pin everybody. Um, but I don't think I get as many matches as those guys used to get. So pin record, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's a big number for less matches. Have you have you guys thought about that or talked about that? Just the the way the sport has changed. You know, you guys are getting fewer matches in the season. I guess I know you're a guy that wrestles year round. But yeah, I mean, I don't really think about it. I just next thing up and I wrestle it. You know, I'm always up to wrestle, wrestle more. You know, just I think it's just the way it works out. I don't know. I don't really worry about it. Is there something to the idea? Of, you know, I, the college season is is long, and wrestling in the Big Ten can be hard. So not wrestling as many matches during the regular season like has you fresher for the postseason, for example. I don't really pay attention to it. <laughs> not even a little bit. No, wrestling. Whatever they tell me to wrestle, I'm wrestling. <laughs> Speaking of paying attention to it, do you look at national rankings at all? No, not really. No. So you don't know your third, for example. I don't really care. Okay. I, yeah, I, I just didn't know how close someone as successful as you would look at something like that and say, hey, why am I in this spot? Or No, I mean, I know the guys I'm going to have to beat, and that's what really matters. It doesn't matter who's ranked where. You know, I know I'm going to have to beat Penn State. I know I'm going to have to beat Michigan. I know I'm going to have to beat Arizona State, Northwestern, anybody and everybody. It doesn't really matter, the rankings. Is it nice to get to this point in the season then where you're going to have matchups like that seemingly every week? Yeah, I mean, I love wrestling, good competition. Um, you know, it's just for me another match. I'm not really like, oh, this guy, whatever. I'm going out there and wrestling how I wrestle. How did that mindset develop, like to not worry about who the next opponent is but to just go wrestle? Because, I mean, there are some guys who, you know, they'll circle certain dates on the calendar, right? Yeah, I mean, I next thing up next next competition is the most important so that's really what i'm worried about you know i know i'm doing the work in the room and, and my preparation is always going to be the same i'm always preparing for the best you know and preparing to be the best so it doesn't really matter who it is i'm getting ready the same yeah i guess like is that a mindset you developed over time or did you were you always thinking like that um i mean I don't know. <laughs> when I was younger, I probably, I mean, remember being like a little kid, like, oh, how many years have you wrestled? Just like any other little kid wrestler, you know? But um, I don't know. I just think that it doesn't really matter who I'm wrestling as long as I'm prepared to wrestle my best. Next up, Illinois. Is it any more special anymore for you? No, I mean, I know a lot of the guys on the Illinois team. Um, you know, I know the guy who's wrestling heavyweight now. He was their 97 pounder for a while. Warner's wrestled him a few times. Um, I mean, I saw him a lot in like middle school tournaments, um, but I don't think I've ever wrestled him since middle school, so. Do you pay attention to the number of guys who maybe wrestle 97 and are now kind of like bulking into heavyweight or growing into heavyweight? I mean, I don't really care. They're 
you know, <laughs> but they, if they want to wrestle heavyweight, they can wrestle heavyweight. <laughs> Some big picture conversation. Because, <laughs> like, you know, the, the state of heavyweights, like, it's just, I feel like it's morphed and changed a lot over the last 10 years, you know, from, you know, the big push and pull guys to, you know, maybe maybe a little bit smaller, more athletic guys, kind of like, you know, like you and all the other guys in the Big Ten and whatnot. And I just, I wasn't sure if you were just cognizant of that. No, I mean, there's still, there's still guys like Schultz that are pushing 285 and, you know, are big. You know, I don't think it, I'm sure there's always been smaller guys. I think maybe the trend is towards a little bit leaner, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll keep working on it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tony. Thanks, yeah. Tony. Freaking, we need a new host. Anthony's Wi Fi is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, questions for Spencer? Hopefully, gaming questions, but you know. What's the game of choice right now? Yeah, we were playing Terraria. You know, it's like a, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a 2D Minecraft. What would you say, what would you describe it as? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like Minecraft. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like fighting like, monsters more yeah, than building. Yeah, huh? more, more bosses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's actually like levels and things you guys have to go through? Uh, there's just like, there, I mean, there's progression in the game. You know, you fight a boss and then new things spawn on the map that you mine and make gear and then fight the next boss and kind of continue that cycle. Okay. I didn't play Minecraft, so I'm like trying I didn't play Minecraft either, but I, mean, I played I Terraria. It so. <laughs> it's the only game I've ever played. Uh, we'll circle back to gaming here in a minute. But <laughs> you've, had, you've had some time to, like, you know, reflect on oh. competition last week. How do you feel? Any new thoughts since maybe we talked last week? No, I mean, I just think that uh, it's good because you're getting into that routine again back into that swing of things, so I'm just ready to get back, in. and we're getting the Big Ten schedule, so here we go, right? So, Your routine, I feel like since you've been here, has almost always been abnormal, just because of the knees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what does it look like now, maybe, compared to years past? Uh, I don't think it's really changed even at all, really. I mean, it's always been uh, a guy do what's best for you, um, more so than anything else, and uh, one match at a time, and go from there really it's always been that way it hasn't changed at all since I've been here so been pretty consistent Spencer uh, we had Tony up there earlier what's your assessment of Tony you probably get to see a few of his matches just you know what's that like seeing a guy come out there and dominate like he has uh, he's like a lightweight and heavyweight I saw he cut the dude in the finals like three times and I was like alright I like that I like seeing that and then he pins him uh, I think he's going. For, is he on his tenth pin? I don't even know. He's pinned so many guys. I'm I'm, I'm having a hard time counting. Um, but I think it's the most pins I've seen on a guy on my team since I've been in college. I think every year we have like the team most falls award or whatever. I think the most I've seen was eight or nine. Uh, so uh, he's gonna blow that out of the water. We got a lot more matches to go. So how much does um, the upcoming Big Ten schedule where there's gonna be a lot of weekends? Friday, Sunday. How much is that going to help you as you continue to progress back to, um, you know, pretty good game shape? Well, Friday, Sundays are good because um, with that day in between, uh, you don't get like a pound for the weight. So it's not technically the same as uh, like a tournament format, but it's you got a day in between kind of to rest, kind of keep your weight down, kind of, you know, get ready to go for that next guy, whoever it is. Right. And then you're making weight again, competing at a high level again with that little day in between. You know, it could be a travel day, it could be if you're home, maybe not a travel day, it doesn't matter. So I think it's a good thing. They're definitely uh different than just like a one dual meet kind of weekend obviously, but they're they're good. How much is just that and, you know, the Big Ten schedule and the Big Ten competition gonna I mean that, that seems like it's probably gonna help you progress even further, yeah. Yeah, like I said, more matches the rest the better, so it's good. I'm glad that there's two in the one weekend. Pack them in. How do you feel now compared to maybe um, you know, that first duel out against Iowa State? Well, definitely uh, more ready to go. I mean, you know, obviously there were some circumstances behind that duel that made me obviously wrestle maybe a little earlier than I was uh, expecting to, but it uh, doesn't matter, you know. If you're not ready to go, who, no, no one else cares. That guy doesn't care. You know what I mean? So who cares? All, all, all it matters is you go out there and you wrestle your hardest for seven minutes and, and more if needed, so. All right. Thanks, Spencer. Thanks, Spencer. Madden, like yeah. football? Yeah. A video game? Yeah. <laughs> like the video game. They don't. They don't like it. 
They don't think it's a video game? No, they, they said it's not a video game. Not in the oh, traditional yeah? sense. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I know that it's popular. That would be more my, um, if I was a video gamer, um, Madden would be something that I would be definitely interested in right. getting good at. We had, we had a fantasy Madden league when I was in college. It was awesome. We were just, somebody was just talking about, um, I think Bobby Telford was talking about how his high school just put in a um, e-sport or not e-sport, but yeah. Um, e, yeah. Yeah. E, e everything, okay. like hundreds of thousands of dollars into their e whatever program. Spencer said in the preseason that's like what he would want to do, like run an e-sports team. <laughs> I mean, obviously Russell, but like that was a side hobby. <laughs> Um, noticed Teske was back on the probables. Um, how's he feeling? He's coming along, and you know we'll see him Friday or we'll see him Sunday. Um, he's on track. We like where he's at. I don't get into specifics. If he wants to do that, um, he can. Um, it, it, it's frustrating, but um, he handled it well, and we're on. We're on to the next thing. How does a set that back like that, you know, for a guy who's, you know, trying to make hay at a new weight? Especially when he's coming on and doing well and, you know, and, um, you know, he emerged a little bit. So, you know, it's, it's that's what I mean by it's frustrating. Um, but we have, you know, Colin Shriver there and he's been awesome. And they're both listed and we'll see what happens. Um, we got to be ready. I know that. You know, Illinois come to town, they, their 33 is, he's, uh, we got to be ready to go, Who, whoever gets the nod. How do you like the way Colin's been, um, you know, kind of? Progressing, good. And, you know, remember, he hadn't had a lot of mat time either. He was dinged up and, you know, elbow and whatever, you know, in the spring and a couple of other issues as well. So um, he's better every time out. So good progress there. Coach Tony Cassiope, 11 and 0, um, nine falls, five in a row. I think it is. What do you see out of him? Is is this the top, the best he's been since he's been here? Um, I mean, here here's the thing. It's all relative. I mean, we we got some matches coming, where you know we're in we're at Penn State on January 28th or 27th or whatever it is, and we don't look ahead. Um, but Tony Cassiope will be the first one to tell you that this is about the next time out. So when you look at, you know, those stats that you just uh, mentioned, that's all great, um, but really it's about what's in front of him. Um, all that helps. It builds momentum. It shows that you have the ability to, to terminate a match. Um, but we, we still, you know, get better every day, and um, he marches to the to the right beat as far as getting better every day. Uh, that's what it, that's what it's about. So I didn't really answer your question. I'm, I'm not going to go, uh, here's the thing, I'll give him credit um, for what it's worth and then, hey, we got to move on because, you know, he was seventh in the country last year. You know, he was, you know, that, that we, we, he knows that he's better than that and we just got to keep getting better. That's the theme. We got to stay healthy and we got to keep getting better. Where has Tony improved the most over the last few years? He is calmer. I think there's an understanding um, that his calm urgency is something that he is going to have to win the day for him. And if you remember the All Star meet, he stood in front of a very dangerous guy there. Um, and so he was maybe too calm. Um, that guy made some adjustments, and uh, we, that's why we got to get better. And that guy slowed us down, you know, with a certain tie, and he slowed us down with a crossbody ride. And um, we need to imagine those things as they're happening, you know, so it's ahead of time. So you're being able to adapt as that match goes on. And I don't think we did a very good job of adapting in that match. Uh, but it did light a fire under him. So he's definitely understanding what calm, patience, 
with combined with urgency, um, he's understanding that more and more. Since you've had a few days um, to reflect on the Salute tournament, what what impressed you the most about the overall team performance? Uh, I mean, I think of Assad. I think of you know, we we have first of all we had some depth there. You know, we had. Um, Rachi and Glazier were both point scorers for us. You know, Rachi, he had a, a, a match in the semis where he was really one for one with a bunch of half shots. Um, so when he had his opportunity, he, he put the guy down. He got the, he got the takedown. Um, that's important. Um, Rachi could be more of a repeater and then open those matches up. That didn't have to be that close of a match. And then Glazier, you know, he lost – he lost a match that was frustrating for him, and then on his way back, the way he was talking to himself, um, I don't have time, you know, to, to, you know, sulk, and and I got to score, I got to score more points, and so, the way that, you know, these guys are taking advantage of their opportunities, um, and the way they're talking to themselves after some adversity, um, and those are those are our, our number two guys right now. Um, so, and then you look at Assad, that was, you know, that was a, a match where he had to get tough in the overtime and he got nicked up a little earlier in that tournament. So, you know, I'm not sure that he would have even been on the mat a year or two ago, you know, for sure. Two years ago, he would have medically forfeited out. And, um, I think as you get older and you, you mature, you deal with things as they come a lot better. And that's what he's done. And that's what, what we've been able to do, um, you know, Spencer, we gave him short notice on it. Um, it wasn't part of the plan, uh, maybe in his mind. And when I say maybe, I'm not being fair to him because he, he, it wasn't. Um, but Terry and I had talked about it. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, Spencer's best when um, if there's a time between competitions where you don't necessarily, you know, tell him you know, what the, what the exact specific game plan is, and he responded very, very well. So um, all that put together, we, we just got to keep getting better. Colin Schriever, I mean, he um, had some wins that were, you know, improvements over the last time he had wrestled those same guys. And I could go on and on probably if, if we go through the lineup. Warner, um, you know, I could – you know, talk about him. Um, you know, we got to get we got to get healthy at 74. Whether it's Nelson Brands or or Brandon Swafford. You know, both those guys and Swafford. Good for him. He had two matches there, and the smart thing to do was to pull him out just because it's his first competition, and he's finally you know turning the corner that way as well. So, a lot of things. A lot of things. We got to stay healthy, and we got to keep getting better. Seemed like Caleb looks a little bit more comfortable down at 49. Um, I, I think so. I think um, I, here's the thing with Caleb Rachi. I think he's a guy that is going to take advice um, and he's going to go where he has the best chance um, to be a point scorer when it counts. And that's at the end of the year in the Big Tens and the Nationals. Um, earlier in the year, that was at, you know, 157. And I think Seabrick has done a great job of establishing himself there. Um, and, you know, we're not looking back. You know, he's our guy at 57. And with the time and the formula, the, the you know, the composite body, whatever, descent plan, you call it, um, you know, Rachi could, could go to 49. It only made sense. And he, he didn't just go out there to play second fiddle to Max Mirren. Um, you know, he went out there to represent himself and give himself the best chance to be the guy at the end of the year. So well, I, I don't know if he's more comfortable there or not. He's definitely more a natural 149-pounder. I mean, he's definitely undersized for 57, but that doesn't matter to him. It doesn't matter to me if we, if we need him at 57. Um, some of the younger guys that competed, Colby, Aiden Riggins. I know Drake's not a younger guy, but he's redshirt this year. What would you think of maybe some of their performances? Good. I mean, that's why it's great. First of all, you have a long break. You have finals week. You have a long break, and you get right back into it. And the second thing is, is everybody was competing. And, you know, you mentioned some names there that are, you know, important to the future of our program or maybe even 
maybe even the present. But, um, you know, our, our depth has always been important to us f philosophy-wise in the program. And we, we talk to our depth um, like that. And, I mean, you know, the next guy up mentality, if you want to use a football term or whatever. But, you know, they literally are, you know, a heartbeat away from being the guy. And that's, that's why, why we compete. And that's why, you know, it's important to talk to, communicate to guys their importance and keep them on the cutting edge. And hopefully they can become independent and think for themselves as to, how much this means and that it's not rinky dink or, or not, you know, it's, it's, it's important. Use a double negative. It's not unimportant. It, it's very important. Doesn't matter if you're third, it doesn't matter if you're third string. So, you know, I look at, I look at Swafford, I look at Nelson Brands, I look at, uh, that, that's 174. And I look at, you know, I look at 97, I look at Glazier and I look at Warner. And, and we, we just got to have, you know, I look at Mir and I look at Rachi. You know, I look at Shriver and Ibarra and I look at Teske. And you, you just have to have those guys continuing to create an edge for themselves or keep an edge or hone an edge or whatever it is. So, and that's not unique. I think that's what every good program in any, in any sport does. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Kurt. Illinois, 7 o'clock.